Hello. Uh, welcome to a Fair Care, our little series on um, love extinguishers. And um, I wanted to welcome you today. I think this is our fifth day on the love extinguishers, and we have a lot of ground to cover today. I'm going to see if I can get through all uh, extinguisher number five, six, and seven. So I'm going to pretty much jump right in. Now, um, first, if you have not been following along, I will just mention that uh, you might want to go back and watch our very first show, which is called Intro Basic Concepts. And this will explain to you what our basic concepts here at a Fair Care are basic concepts. Um, however, uh, just to kind of help catch you up really quick, here at Fair Care, we think that love is like a campfire. It's a uh, a fire that you can build. There are actions you can take that will build the fire, make it hotter, and make it uh, burn blazing brightly. This is love kindlers. Uh, these actions would be things that that you know build the love in your marriage. And then we there are actions that would actually put out the fire of love. Uh, the, we call those love extinguishers. And this week we've been going over the love extinguishers, and uh, I'm I'm up to the last ones. I want to get through them today so that we can uh, proceed tomorrow to the sub the steps to take to end an affair, and that's pretty important. So I want to get right to that. And so today I'm, you know, chugging through these couple. So I'm going to jump right in, and the the fifth uh, extinguisher is the extinguisher of family neglect. Now this extinguisher involves disregarding your spouse's need for help with the family and in fact actually uh, inflicting emotional harm by becoming the sort of spouse who, uh, well here's a, a, t a typical behavior, would be refusing to leave and cleave. So um, our, uh, for example, are you the wife who's constantly running to mommy every time you and your husband have an argument? Um, are you the husband who lets mom schedule everything and you just tell your wife she has to deal with it? Um, are you the husband who says to his wife, uh, you're not cooking it the way mom does? Um, if so, those are examples of, uh, you've, obviously you're putting out your spouse's fire of love <laughs> by acting like that. And you need to leave your family of origin and cleave to your spouse and the new family that you've created with your spouse. Now, I am not saying that you need, uh, you know, we have been commanded to honor our father and mother. Uh, so you don't have to be uh, disrespectful or dishonorable to your family of origin, your, your p parents, your mom and dad. But they, there needs to be a clear message that when it comes to, you know, you and your spouse are the ones that are united. So if you and your husband have an argument, and you, let's say you just disagree, the one you turn to is your husband. You don't turn to others outside of your marriage. And likewise, if you're uh, letting your mom, you know, call, if you're the husband and you're letting your mom call the schedule or telling your wife she's not cooking things right because you're, it's the way your mom did it or something, you need to cut those mommy apron strings. So like I've been saying, stop the old behavior, which is, you know, letting your old family of origin run the shots and start the new behavior. And the new behavior would be preference to your spouse. Um, if you disagree with your husband, work it out with your husband and only your husband, not other outsiders. And with your regards to your mom's scheduling things, mom, my wife has something scheduled. I am not able to come at that time. I need to think of her first, okay? Uh, another example would be uh, uh, this particular love extinguisher would be somebody who is not making time, like personal adult time with their spouse. Now, as a married couple, you aren't just there to work and do chores and take care of kids. Okay, You also vowed to love your spouse until one of you dies. So, if you're the kind of spouse who does not designate any daily time for your spouse and, then, and some weekend time, just to do things together, just to be, you know, a married couple and have mutual interests and have mutual time together, then you're putting out the flame of love. If you're focusing so much on doing chores and taking care of the kids, you're you're killing your marriage. So again, stop the the behavior of, you know, 
all you know only focusing on the chores and the kids and start the good behavior of taking some time every day specifically for your spouse and a considerable weekend time I personally I'm just gonna say and this is gonna sound like incredibly like you have got to be kidding me but I'm just telling you I personally recommend minimum of an hour a day just for your spouse and probably about five hours a day on Saturday and Sunday or whatever your weekend days are you know because of schedules um, this would be time when you are you spend time together doing things that you're mutually enjoy okay uh, another person who is disregarding their uh, the, the spouse's needs for help with the family this is a person who doesn't make time for child rearing okay so are you the mom who says just wait till your dad gets home and then you make your husband do all the discipline are you the dad who sits and plays while while the wife is struggling with you know doing all the lunches and doing all the homework and getting all the baths done and getting the kids in bed all by herself okay if so then you are a spouse who's building resentment uh, you're building resentment within your spouse and you're killing the fire of love you're dumping water all over the fire so what do I always say start stop the bad behavior okay if you're the mom who says just you wait till your dad gets home I mean you have to stop doing that and you have to start do, doing some of the discipline yourself if you and your husband agree that this thing should be disciplined and it occurs while it, you know you're on duty you're the one who does the discipline don't make your spouse always be the bad guy um, and that's not saying that being doing discipline is the bad guy either I'm just saying you got to do this together now the ideal situation I personally think is if something occurs the two of you talk about it do you agree it should be disciplined and then the two of you stand there together and do the discipline together that's ideal that's great but if that's not happening at least share that load with your spouse okay and if you're the dad who is sitting there playing wow after work while your spouse struggles with the homework and the bath time and getting everything guess what turn the game off help your wife with the homework and the bath time get the kids in bed everybody's happy then the two of you go play a while together okay stop the bad thing start the good thing okay follow okay another example of somebody who's uh, disregarding their spouse's needs for family time not equitably contributing to the household chores now I understand that everybody um, thinks to themselves oh I do way more than they do it's not fair blah 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 right and everybody um, you know the, uh, if you're the working spouse you think go out of into the wild wild world of work <laughs> I'm gonna work all day and when I come home um, I want to relax okay um, if you're this person right and you're going off and you do that then the person who's at home literally has no time to themselves ever okay They're, they are at work 24 hours a day imagine how you'd feel if you were at work 24 hours a day and never got just a time off okay so when it comes to the household chores whatever they may be the two of you sit down together and decide how to share them okay um, bear in mind that laundry needs to be washed dishes need to be washed uh, wait I take that back laundry needs to be washed and folded and put away dishes need to be washed and put away the carpet needs to be vacuumed the floor needs to be swept dusting needs to be done there needs to be three meals a day made and scrubbing bathtubs scrubbing sinks okay even if your spouse is a stay-at-home parent they might have more time available to them that's cool I get that but what you want to do is be the spouse who like you sit down together and you decide together yes I'll take this and this and this because I'm home more but when you come home will you do this one and this one or even better yet I always suggest this one do dishes together and if laundry needs to be done do it together don't let you if you sit over there and you see your spouse folding laundry don't make them sit there and do it by themselves do it with them that's what I'm talking about okay and then the last person is getting too comfortable this is the spouse who acts like well I caught you and now I don't have to put up any kind of effort into this relationship anymore they've given up 
Okay, if you're the spouse who's gotten lax in your relationship and you stop putting forth any effort, um, then you are, uh, you're, you know, you're not sending flowers, you're not saying any loving words. You've gotten too comfortable and you are putting out the fire of love in your spouse's, uh, in the marriage. You're killing the marriage. So, stop the bad behavior and get into the good behavior. Um, so that's pretty much love kindler number five, which is the family time. Uh, let's start now with love kindler number six. This is social neglect. Okay. Now this extinguisher may sound like you have to be a social butterfly and hey, some people are introverts. I get that. I'm not saying you have to be out, get out and be social. But actually this love extinguisher has more to be more to do with treating your spouse in a discourteous way and neglecting to do things with your spouse that is to say like you're purposely excluding them from uh, socially being with you. Okay? So social neglect is inflicting harm by being the sort of spouse who um, has irritating habits. Okay, you're impolite. Um, now everybody, I think, uh, has some irritating habits. Like you know, uh, I typically think of the family that you know one spouse hangs the toilet paper over the top and the other spouse hangs it under the bottom, and they might be irritated by that. Okay, but I'm I'm not talking about those little irritating things. I would suggest you work those out with each other somehow. But I'm talking about um, being impolite, being, you know, you don't have manners and speak to your spouse courteously, right? So we're talking about the person who smacks their lips at the table, elbows on the table, um, the, the person who's treating their spouse rudely, okay? If you are treating guests to your home in a, uh, in a more polite and mannerly way than you're treating your spouse, there's a problem. So, uh, again, stop the bad behavior start being polite to your spouse. Say please, say thank you, and uh, start treating them with respect and courtesy. Okay? Um, another example of social neglect, bearing in mind again that the whole thing with people can be introverts and they're allowed to be who they are. <laughs> social neglect would be somebody who still acts like they're single and independent. Okay? When we got married, we agreed to intimately come to know our spouse and to let them come to know us. So this kind of social neglect continues to behave in a way that does not consider their spouse in everything that they do, especially uh, neglecting how their actions might affect their spouse. So they're making choices like as if they're unattached, like as if they don't have to, oh, I don't have to consult with my spouse on any decisions. I, and there's definitely not unity. There, it's like the spouse does not exist. Okay? If you treat your spouse like an afterthought, if you act like they are, com you're completely independent of them, then you're dumping water onto the blaze of love and you're putting out the fire. Again, stop the behavior where you're acting like you're single and bear in mind that as a married person, everything you do has an effect on your spouse. Every choice you make, every so include them on the decisions. All right. Another example of social neglect um, would be uh, a spouse that does not share activities or free time. Now, um, there's two two people that two kinds of ways of doing this: introvert way and extrovert way. And I want you to kind of see if you can figure out what I'm talking. Uh, you know, kind of see the difference. Extroverts are people who gain their energy by going out amongst others and like the energy of the others helps recharge them. Okay? An introvert is a person who um, might mingle out amongst others but that depletes them and then when they want to charge up they have to get some alone time and that is what charges their energy back up. Okay? So an, an extrovert person would be a, um, that's doing social neglect would be a person who has a million activities scheduled and they just leave their spouse at home. They don't, and, the, and even above that, they don't make time for their spouse. So a perfect example of this that typically happens, oddly enough, is here's this lady who's the wonderful, the wonderful lady and the church lady, right? 
and she's involved on the prayer committee and the women's Bible study committee, and she does the youth group volunteering, and she, you know, she's got something scheduled every night of the week. And you know what she does? She is neglecting her husband. Their marriage is going to fall apart. Okay, so that's that's one person, kind of an extrovert way of doing that. The other one is the, the kind of an introvert way of doing it. This is the person who. Um, Maybe they do think something on their own, like they're, maybe they're reading, you know, and that's, oh, yeah, I finally get to recharge my battery. But they're neglecting their spouse in that um, they schedule things for themselves, by themselves, time by themselves, but they're not sharing activities and free time with their spouse. And so, in this instance, both ways, what you want to do is um, bear in mind which one, you know, are, are you an introvert or an extrovert? Is your spouse different than you? Keep those things in mind, but what you want to do is bear in mind that when you are uh, married, that your marriage is an image of the love that Christ has for his church. And that's that's a love where he includes you. So what you're wanting to do, where you're aiming at, is activities that you both mutually agree on, and you do them together. Okay, um, another good example of social neglect kind of, you'll see, is a, pers a spouse that gives the, the silent treatment or the cold shoulder to their spouse. They are not actively listening. Okay, So, this I'm sure you guys have heard of this one. You're the spouse who, you, your spouse, um, you know, did something that you disagree with, and so to punish your spouse, you give them the cold shoulder and the silent treatment, sometimes for weeks on end. Um, are you the spouse that says that you're listening when you're actually kind of halfway reading Facebook? Okay. Um, are you the spouse who is, you know, yeah, 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 and you're watching the TV show, right? This is a spouse that's, you know, what you're communicating to your spouse is whatever this thing is here that you're paying attention to, that's worth more to you than they are. So, um, you can imagine that communicating that kind of message definitely dumps water on the passion of love and it's putting the fire out. So what you want to do, change the behavior. If you if they do something and you disagree with it, first of all, it's not your job to punish your spouse. You can speak to them like an equal adult and say, I disagree with you. And you may even say, we have to agree to disagree because you're, I'm just not going to be convinced of your side and you're not going to convince me, I'm not going to convince you. We, we disagree. It's okay. We're different people. Okay. But don't just give them the cold shoulder and the silent treatment. That shuts a person out. And our whole thing of being married is to include and be one with your spouse. And then last kind of social neglect is somebody who is so jealous and so controlling of their spouse that their spouse can't have any friends. Okay? Um, it is one thing for your spouse to have, you know, like hundreds of admiring opposite sex friends. I'm not talking about that guy. I'm talking about your spouse is so smothered that they can't go out even once and there happens to be you know somebody of the opposite sex in the same room <laughs> and without facing accusations and uh, you know the Spanish Inquisition when they come home. Uh, if you are the spouse that is trying to s stop your spouse from having friends, you're trying to, to smother them like that, um, you, you know you, you're making threats, you're trying to sabotage uh, their personal uh, friendships and that kind of thing then um, you're you know and you're interfering with friendships and, and causing trouble basically that way um, you are you're dumping water on the fire and that one in particular it can be a really big one because what happens uh, the main interaction of friendship and, and, and you know mental and physical emotional whatever, this is all with your spouse but everybody knows a few other people um, I would highly encourage ladies to have lady friends and men to have male friends because you put yourself in a position that is less likely to be vulnerable for an affair <laughs> when you're um, being respectful to your spouse that way. But the fact is, if you go to work, probably going to be somebody of the opposite sex there. So if you're that jealous one, then then you're the one who you've you've got to deal with it, not them. Does that make sense? <clears throat> okay. Our final love extinguisher uh, is the love extinguisher of security neglect. Uh, 
Uh, this love extinguisher has to do with not being the safe, secure place for your spouse, uh, mentally, emotionally, and physically. Security neglect is inflicting harm on your spouse. Be um, a, that would be because you're a person who has angry explosions. Now, we all know this kind of person. Uh, you go to speak to them, and in your head, you honestly, maybe it's, you're bringing up a topic that's not a well-loved topic, shall we say, but um, you're, you're bringing it up in a way that's, I actually am inquiring and would like to know more and they just explode all over you and, and you feel like you've been left ripped to shreds, right? If, you, if that's the way that you're treating your spouse, angry explosion, you are, this is going to be a major dump on the fire and it won't be too long until that fire's out. Uh, you're inflicting harm on your marriage, okay? Another one is a verbal attack dog, okay? Um, again, you would recognize this kind of an example, it's the person who, again, you're going to speak to them and they, like, like rawr, 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 they're tearing you to shreds with their teeth. Verbal and emotional abuse. Okay? Um, calling names. Um, Im Im immediately attacking the person. Um, and pushing the buttons that are going to make you, f you know, y your feelings be all upset and hurt. If that's the kind of person, if that's the way you're treating your spouse, again, you're doing major dumps on on your fire and what often so often people will say well yeah but they did this they did that da, da, da. when someone behaves poorly that is not justification for you to behave poorly back you're still responsible for how you choose to behave and if they do something that causes you to feel that angry explosion come in or that verbal attack coming it's your job to get away and call a time out. Do what you have to do to maintain yourself. You're responsible. So, um, another example of a person who is not, uh, who's, who's inflicting harm via security neglect would be somebody who's passive aggressive. Uh, we discussed that a little bit just a minute ago where um, you might agree to something and then behind their back you're going to punish them or you're going to um, defy them by doing the exact opposite. Or another one that's actually kind of like hidden, but uh, it's a little bit hidden, but it's actually passive aggressive is when you say, "Oh yeah, yeah, I'll do that for you," thing, and because you know they want, they want you to do it, and then you won't do it because you don't want to, and they say, "Hey, I thought you agreed." Oh yeah, I forgot, baloney. I'm calling a baloney right now. That's being passive aggressive, and you're inflicting harm on your. Now, granted, I get it. Sometimes you do really forget, but I'm talking about those times when you didn't really want to do it, and you didn't have the courage to tell your spouse, "I don't want to do this." Be honest. Tell them you don't want to do it. Okay. Uh, a major security neglect, uh, where like pretty much this is an instant, full out. Uh, putting out the fire is physically abusive. Now what people don't understand is that often physically abusive is not balling up your fist and punching your spouse in the face. Now, that's what I used to think physically abusive was. If they didn't do that, they weren't being physically abusive, I thought, right? No. Physically abusive is also, I'm going to punch near your head, but en enough to let you know that you could have been hit, but I just didn't. A physically abusive would be grabbing pushing, shoving, um, you know, shaking, yanking, those are all phys like f the kind of thing where you might be grab someone so hard you're going to leave a mark on them, that's physical abuse. And also, doing things that are like threatening physical abuse or um, I'm going to kick the dog into the wall and after that you'll, you'll be submissive because you don't want the dog to be killed. Okay. Th this all falls under physical abuse, and you can see those are immediate that inflicts harm upon your spouse, and pretty much immediately put out the fire entirely. Uh, in fact, for if you're in a physically abusive relationship, I would suggest number one thing: just get to a safe place, get away to a safe place, and then we will discuss all the rest of it. <laughs> okay. Um, so ideally, you want to be a safe haven. This would be where your spouse can be at ease and accepted uh, and safe mentally. They are safe to, to share their ideas and their thoughts. Uh, emotionally, they're, f they're safe to share their feelings and not be attacked. And physically, you know, maybe they need to, 
here's what I need physically, and then they're not going to be uh, physically attacked. And not be chased around the house with scissors, you know, stuff like that. So we've had some, it's a pretty major uh, video today. We've gone over three extinguishers, and the, the last one is kind of a heavy one. Uh, so if you have any questions or comments or you need to talk about them, you can email me at affaircare at gmail.com. Uh, also, my spouse, uh, David, will, you know, if, if you're a fellow and you want to talk to a guy, David will talk to you. So email either one of us. We both get them at affaircare at gmail.com. Uh, or likewise, just leave your comments in the, if you're watching us on YouTube, you know, on YouTube or in the, on the blog. And tomorrow uh, we'll be starting something I'm really looking forward to, and that is uh, the steps that you can take to uh, stop an affair. And all of this is in prelude to our new program that's coming out October 1st. That'll, that's 90 days to save your marriage and save you. So um, hope you'll join us on, on more of the journey, uh, and uh, I really am glad that you're here. Thanks so much. Hope you have a great night. Bye-bye. <laughs>